Hey, Chris from eBike Products, and I just want to go ahead and thank you guys all for watching. And today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about tools for maintaining your bike, some things you might want to just keep in mind about um, bike ownership and ways that you can maintain your bike without actually having to always take it down to the shop. Now, I'm all about supporting your local shops, but there are some things that you just don't need to go ahead and have them do. You can just tighten things yourself, check certain things out, or do some certain changes that are pretty easy. But you might want to have certain tools around, and that's some of the things I'm going to be covering today. Also, toward the end of this video, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for three Lexavon wrenches, one of each different size that they offer. I have two of them here. There is a third that I don't have in this set right now, but Lexavon has graciously offered to do a giveaway. So at the end of this video, make sure you watch how to get how you can enter to go ahead and win one of the three giveaways that we have offering here. First things first, I want to make sure I have full disclosure and disclaimer here. I am not a bike mechanic. In fact, I'm learning how to take care of my bike through other YouTube videos, through talking to people to um, just reaching out to vendors, seeing what they have to say or offer about certain things. And, uh, and then of course, trial and error. If any of you out there are bike mechanics or just experienced in, in um, taking care of maintenance and those type of things, please feel free to correct me in the comments. I'm learning so much by uh, the audience or what you guys, the viewers out there, telling me what I've been saying wrong. So things, I'm not gonna go into hardcore maintenance. I'm gonna be talking more about these tools. So let's get started on this review of the Lexavon wrenches and other tools for your electric XP and any other electric e-bike that you might own. Okay, so let me start first with a full disclaimer about the wrenches that I have here. These torque wrenches are made by Lexavon. This here I purchased off Amazon.com after reading the views and just seeing how much people were talking, how good it was, also the value behind it. It wasn't something that'll break the bank, but yet you know it's just not something that's gonna be cheapy. It has certifications on the way that um, it's been calibrated, so you know that it's accurate. and. They also have three different sizes. I reached out to Lexavon and I told them, hey, you know, I got this one, I really love it. Um, I found that it works for great different parts of the bike here, but for the larger uh, nuts and bolts that need to be tightened on the bike here, this is too small. And it, I was wondering if they had a recommendation, one bigger, and they sent me the big one. This one is actually the half inch torque wrench. And they sent this to me so that I could do a review. And this is actually one of the wrenches you want to have handy, handy when you're going to be doing any type of hub uh, tire changes or things that you're going to be taking off the wheels. And these will be working for the nuts that are on the, the tire and the rims that get attached to the frame. So this is one of those wrenches that just kind of essential. Um, when I did the tire replacement video or the patching of the tube, and I took off the tire off the back and I was putting it back. When I took it off, it was really, really tight. I could not believe how tight they had made it. So when I was putting it back on, I didn't know if I was making it tight enough. I just did it as strong as I possibly could. Then I started reading and finding out that if you over tighten nuts and bolts, what can happen is one, of course you can strip them. I mean, I'm sure almost every single one of us has started screwing in or, or ratcheting something in and all of a sudden it gets tight, tight, tight and then gets loose and you're like, oh, just devastated about that. And I did not want to have anything like that happen on you know a thousand dollar bike. Or so I'm just thinking I, I should start to build up tools that I'll keep safe. So I went on YouTube, found out how these torque wrenches work, did some research, picked up this Lexavon, and I've been loving it so far. Uh, I learned a little about torque wrenches from the bike hand bike set, but those were just uh, you know they're adequate just to get you going and back on the road, but they're not precision. So I wanted something a little better just to make sure that I'm not over tightening. The other thing about over tightening is when you have your screws that are coming together and they're, they're tight in there, if you're over tightening, even though it doesn't strip, what can happen is you can stretch them and the pressure that's on them, as time goes on, they can actually get deformed just because they're so tight in there and they don't, they're not meant to be that tight. There's a certain level of pressure and that's what torque wrenches do. They actually allow you to uh, tighten things up right to the amount of pounds per square inch or newton meters per square inch uh, power that is needed to go ahead and make it just tight enough on those parts just so that you know that it's secure and that you're not over tightening it or that it's too loose. So those are the things that I want to go over with these wrenches here. Again, as I mentioned in the intro, we are doing a giveaway at the end. Lexavon then told me after they sent this out that I am free to go in and do a giveaway and they'll give one 
of each of the different sizes that they have. So this here is the quarter inch torque wrench. This is the one that I recommend that everybody should be getting for things like your uh, seat posts. This attachment will, will work for that there, uh, but mostly for anything that's dealing on the handlebars. Uh, that's also really good. Plus the brake caliper um, mounts, those type of things are all be used for this size. It has a range of 2.26 to 22.6 Newton meters. And that's what this wrench works great for. And that's what I used in some of the other videos that you may have seen when I was doing the mirror replacements on that as well. If you haven't seen those videos, check it out. You can actually see me use those in action, but I'm going to demonstrate them in this today's video as well. This again is for the back wheel hubs and things that are bigger. I'm going to demonstrate this not on the hubs today, but on actually a seat uh, example on how you can hear the clicks and well, how you know it works. This is new. I just opened today. And as you can see, it also comes with a two year warranty on it. Plus it has certificate of calibration, just an instruction manual and some things about it. So some of the things you should know about a torque wrench first is you always want it set to zero to the lowest setting whenever you're storing it. So you're gonna bring it all the way down. And I'll show a little bit more about that. So that's the first thing when storing it. You also wanna treat it like a precision tool, which means you don't wanna be throwing it around. Uh, these do have special calibrated springs in it that are loaded in here to make sure that it's right to the right tension that you're having it set. And then you also wanna keep these in dry places where they won't rust if possible. So that's another thing is keep it in the case. You don't wanna leave these lying around or let other people borrow it to, you don't also want to use these to loosen nuts and bolts and screws because this is made for actually just to get the right tension and tightening down. That's another reason these are in protective cases. Uh, these are also accurate only for torque sensing on a tightening. If you're actually loosening something, of course you shouldn't be using this anyway. Now we're gonna be talking about usage. Now the other thing is, if you're gonna be using tools to go ahead and tighten things up, I showed this in the other video as well, but I actually use, this is a very inexpensive screwdriver. This is the Tech Pull. Screwdriver runs about $20. Usually it runs $25 and there's coupons on it that you can get. Um, it also straightens out. But the reason why I like this is because as you tighten something up, it has its own torque setting here and you just put it to the lowest and what you can do is it'll quickly screw things in for you very quickly, but it also comes with a whole bunch of bits and screws and drill sets that will get you a lot of your hex uh, items screwed in. So again, we're gonna do some demonstration on that. So this is another tool that I would recommend having it. If, you're, if you are electric XP owner, the other thing that you want to make sure that you have, and I mentioned this on the tire replacement, is you wanna make sure you get an 18 millimeter wrench. No matter what, check your tool sets now, you may not actually have one. They usually skip 18 millimeters in tool sets, so you might have to go out and buy one, but you definitely wanna have one of these because this is the only way you're gonna be able to take off your rear hub get one of these. An adjustable wrench might be good, but there is a problem with the way that the railer guard has a hard time allowing people to use an adjustable wrench unless you're using a small adjustable wrench. And with the things being so tight, the first time you're getting it off, those small ones are extremely difficult. You also wanna check some of your ratchet sets. If you haven't checked your ratchet set recently, you might realize that you don't have an 18 millimeter in there as well. So which one should you get as far as the torque wrenches, again, I was saying that you want to probably start with getting a quarter inch drive. So it has one of those small heads on there. So also realize you're gonna to have to get just for all the quarter inch sizes, which was a problem actually for me. So one thing I really liked about this set as well is that it also comes with a whole bunch of the hex keys that you're probably gonna be using on your bike. Most of the time, a five millimeter and a three millimeter will take care of a lot of the stuff that's on the handlebars. Uh, this also does work for a lot of the suspension seat posts, like the one I offer with Zoom. So that actually is another tool. But then they also come here in this set, and also the sockets are also already quarter inch, so they'll work in this. But unfortunately, these are not metric, and most of the bike parts on there are metric. So just keep in mind, this wrench does not come with any sockets. Neither of the wrenches do. Now, Lexavon does offer socket sets as well, separately from the torque wrenches, but you know they know a lot of people already have standard sockets off of their ratchet sets, so they don't usually provide it on there. I have found that I don't have any of the half inch sockets that are metric. I only have standards, so that's a problem, which is one of the reasons on this demonstration today, I'm only gonna be showing this demonstration with 
the seat post a uh, clamp. There is actually a screw on there that I have a socket that's a standard that actually would work well enough to do the demonstration on it. So we're gonna be showing that, but let's go ahead and get some demonstrations done with that. Okay, so I think one of the easiest way to show this demonstration is actually on one of the zoom posts. And the reason being is, if you can see here, it actually already has the recommended max Newton meter setting right there. It says max 10 Newton meters. So that already tells us how tight we should be making this and that's where our torque wrench would come into play. So what we first wanna do is we wanna make sure that we tighten this down, not using the torque wrench first, but as tight as possible, just by hand, where we're only gonna use the torque wrench for the last mile of tightening, basically. Now we can also use, I like to use this because it's a lot faster to go ahead and do it. So I'll put it up to like a seven. So that's pretty tight already as it is, but definitely not tight enough because we need to go to 10. Now 10 is quite a bit of pressure. So I'll take this here and I'll use actually an adapter to go this way here. Now, if you have one, it's not usually recommended that you use adapters on a torque wrench. And the reason being is that because of the extra play that this gives here. But basically I gotta use what I have. Uh, if you already have one of these, that's already a quarter inch that will go on there, perfect. But I wanna show you then now how to do the setting. So this is 10 Newton meters max. There is a setting here that says Newton meters where you can go ahead and work your way up toward that. But there's also inch pounds. Now this was designed to be more easily read with the inch pound side. And the torque Newton meter side here is a little harder to go ahead and figure out. You used to kind of use mathematical formulas to do that. But the easiest thing to do is 10 Newton meters you basically go onto either Google or if you have an Apple, you can ask Siri, just do an internet search. I do a search for 10 Newton meters for how many inch pounds that this one is gonna be, because this has an inch pounds. The bigger wrench actually uses a different setting of foot pounds here. So there's two different types of settings, but this is a smaller setting we're using for smaller things. So you ask for inch pounds, and what it will tell you is that 10 Newton meters equals 88.5 inch pounds. Now, I actually started using a a chart and what I'm doing is I'm starting to write down all the different levels just as I do searches I keep this on hand or take a picture of it that way I don't have to keep on asking and do searches on it but this is 88.5 inch pounds is what it has to be and like I'm going to show you this is actually made to be easily adjusted and read with this particular um, side so at 88 we're going to be rolling this up now what you need to do is you need to loosen the bottom here that allows this to spin Okay, and then you're gonna spin this all the way up until your zero lines up to a number that's close to it, which is gonna be the 80 here. So we're gonna be moving this up all the way to the 80. And once we hit that level of 80 with the zero, we now know that we are at 80 and zero. Now that we're here, then we're gonna keep on counting because we need to go 88. Every line equals one. So 81, two, three, four, now my 85, 86, 87, and 88. Now I don't need it to be all the way up to the max. So I'm gonna actually go a little less than the full and I'm gonna take it down maybe about two or three pounds. This will be near the 10 Newton meters that it was actually recommending that we go. This is how it's gonna be converted over. So from there, and then you have to screw the bottom here to tighten it up, okay? And that way it doesn't turn. That's how it locks. And then of course we can go ahead and uh, do our setting here. And then if you hear that click, that click tells you that you've hit your max. You can hold the end. There, you hear the click. And we have hit our max, and that's it. But here we're gonna bring up another seat, the actual Electric XP seat. Now, with that, we actually have the Electric XP chart. You can actually get this chart off of the Electric XP website. If you go to one of the actual bikes that you're gonna purchase it and go down to the, the description of it, you'll see a PDF link that'll bring up this on page 12. They've actually updated this recently with all the recommended torque settings. And what we're looking for here is the saddle rail binder because we will be testing it on this screw here. This is the saddle rail binder. And at 22 Newton meters, that is actually 16.2 foot pounds. And again, I did a Google search on it, or actually I asked Siri with my watch and she was able to go ahead and give me that information at 16.2. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna tighten this up actually first using just a regular ratchet. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of tighten it up just to make sure that it's, it's fairly tight without sitting there. And again, setting this here, the other side, tighten it up. 
And then what we want to do is really tighten it down with the Lexavon, and we're going to go up again to 16.2 pounds. So we're going to do zero, and then we're going to go up to 16. And since it's a 2.2 extra pounds more, we don't need to go any further than that. So that's 16 there. And again, we're just going to screw this in to lock this in, put this on. And of course, if it's on the bike, you'll have it a lot more stable. But we're going to go ahead and tighten this up until we hear the click. There. Can you hear that click? A little bit more time. That click means that we've got it to the right point. And we can go to the other side. Can you hear the click? There. Can you hear the click? That click means that we've hit our mark. Okay, so let's go on and talk about how to win one of these wrenches. So again, Lexavon has generously offered to go ahead and give away one each of their different models. The This is the uh, LX181, which is the quarter inch. They have the LX182, which is the 3 8 inch, which is the, your basic standard size that's in the middle here that I don't have on hand. And then the LX183, which is the half inch. You can go ahead and enter for that by going to ebikeproducts.com slash newsletter. What we're doing is we're going to be doing a random drawing for all of the people who sign up for the newsletter. You do not have to stay on it after the drawing. You can always unsubscribe if you wish. But um, we are just going ahead and building our newsletter list so that we can send out deals and promotions that we have when we start building up inventory for the, the website. Um, I'm bringing in products now, various like the Zoom Pulse has done very, very well. We completely sold out on the first batch. The next batch is coming in very soon, within probably the next 10 days or so. And uh, those of you who've emailed for that, I will be notifying you as well on when they come in. Uh, they've just sent emails, but we can now have like, a notification as well, a setup for a uh, waiting list that will automatically be put together in a newsletter format. But that is actually how we're going to be doing this from now on. So sign up for the newsletter. Again, that's ebikeproducts.com slash newsletter. You'll see where you can sign up for it. I promise you we will not be spamming you. It's only going to be for promotions that we're going to be launching new products for so that you'll know I'm actually having physical product that is being sold and offered that's actually good stuff not things that are just not going to be useful for everybody and I'm actually doing very selective on what I'm bringing in on that based on what I'm seeing on feedback I know that the bike water bottle bags are extremely popular those are doing very well and I thank you guys so much for all the great feedback the great comments the building of this channel it gives me opportunities to work with vendors to who actually can help me do give me product for demonstrations like this uh, thank you again to Lexavon for your generosity and your support on that. And I hope to see all you guys in the next video. If you like this video, you learned something from it, hit the like below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.